Welcome to my studio. My name is Carrie Waltz and I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. Today's focus is to help you find your creative child, talking as much art as we wanted to, and enjoying the beauty that was around us. It was on Lake Martin and we also got to share some time, spending time at Jim Scott's Garden, which is a privately owned garden, and we were able to get reservations as artists to go in and, and view, and it was just amazing. So those four things will be focused on and at the end I'll include some pictures of the garden if you're interested and please join me as we explore finding your creative child. Riley is supervising me today. So take a look at how we played with the colors and I think you will want to try it. You choose just inexpensive pastels then you break them up in about thirds each stick and place them in a coffee grinder. When you place them in the coffee grinder, you try to get this all the little pieces round up as much as possible. Out. And then I place a bag over it and just dump it out. I use gray a lot, and I don't know why, but it, it just makes it go further. Um, and it probably Neutralizes. takes about three sticks to make a nice size block. Oh, that's good. And and it's sort of fun to figure out, hmm, I wonder what color this is gonna come out. And if there's if you're in the sort of same color area, it's okay to just use the same, not clean it completely out. Y'all pick out a color you like and we can I have some in my closet. From Walmart. Okay, cute there little strainer. Uh-huh. And then what we're going to do is sift it down. And this one did pretty good because it just doesn't have really any knots or holes. I mean, hard spots in it. That makes you make, make a little hole like we're making southern biscuits. Oh, you've got a tiny hole in your bottle so you don't uh -huh. overdo. You're so clever. And this take, sometimes takes a little time to mix all this, but you'll start seeing it come together like biscuits in just a minute. That's a nice purple. Mm -hmm. a dusty, it's a very good purple. Dusty purple. That's, this yeah. is an eggplant. Egg egg um, yeah. Yes, for the um, stormy sky. So it works better to do that on a board There's just as opposed one to like a paper plate that had yes. edges. Well, I used glass when I originally learned. I took a frame apart and used the glass oh, on that the frame. Work. You can go up to that furniture liquidator and pour something. And get a $10. Yeah, or $5. Yeah. You can yeah. Hit her. But the glass can cut you more so than this will. Yeah. Well, you need to put masking or duct tape on the Around edge. the edge. But we're going to have to slide this off oh, so the duct tape would interfere with that. I got gotcha. you. But this is, this is the time-consuming part. Mm -hmm. But when it starts sticking together good... Uh, coming together and all the water and the pastels are getting married now <laughs> go into the chapel and <laughs> gonna gonna get okay i'm gonna post this part I, now is it a little sometimes bit too wet, Pam? it's probably a little bit too wet right now but but you wet it to get it off of this again and it look how it slides that's well, it's cool. just, it's wet mush. Uh -huh. But it doesn't it make shape. It slides. Let me put it up under the, there yeah. Woo! Uh-oh. <laughs> now you reshape again. What about if you pour it into cookie cutters I and then I lift think, the cookie cutter? Oh, my God. You could make work. them in the shapes of little stars and angels and dolphins. <laughs> Okay, once, say it again. Once these dry in the sun, probably a day or two, um, you can get sandpaper and shape it how you like it. Because it does not have to be perfect like this. Just basically. It has to be perfectly imperfect. So you could yes. break it in half if you wanted. Oh, yes. Shape it. Cool. Thank you. Or you. Sure. Let's, yeah. let's let you mix with some brown. Okay. How about that? Um, That's a pretty blue. Let's mix. Let's mix. Let's separate it. Okay. Let's separate it so if we don't like what we get, oh, we don't have a huge amount of. Oh. Yeah, we got a lot going of green here. I Do I have red? Well, there's. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a, a red, more red or brown there.
you know, mixing the colors as, as they were, just grinding them up was fun. But then you get to maneuver the powders and say, oh, I want to neutralize that blue and add something that's close to the opposite, like the orange or the rusty color, which has orange in it, then you can neutralize it. If you want to lighten it up, you would need to add a white or something similar with a lighter tone. She used a lot of gray pastels to mix in and the grays will just soften and neutralize the color just a little bit. Sometimes when I'm plein air painting, I start with a gray and then I add other colors to it to bend the gray. I might want a gray green. I might want a gray blue. But if I start with a, a pile of gray, that can be my home, my, my base color, and then I can bend it going different directions, whether I want it warm or cool. So that's another option that you can use with a different medium. Finding people who share your interests are, is so important. It wasn't just art that we shared, but we talked about other things as well. And when two of my artist students, friends, realized they were both literature lovers, and one of them started talking about something in English lit, you just saw the other one's face light up like, oh, there is someone that shares a passion that I have. So those two could geek out about uh, English lit, all they wanted, at Macbeth and Shakespeare and what are all, whatever all else. And they just really enjoyed sharing that. And that was just one little hint of what it's like when you get with an artist and you can talk art all you want. I think everyone has a passion that is not shared by someone you love. And if you always want to talk about what you're excited about and your friends look at you like, oh, here she goes again. You know, that glassy eyed look or uh, I'm looking through you, not really listening to you. I've realized, okay, that, that I just won't talk about that that much when I'm around them. I'll just share just little bits instead of all the details. But when you can get with friends that share that and you spend time that way, not only do you grow, but you exchange so many different ideas and it, it their excitement excites you. So take a retreat, go to a workshop, take a class. I'm always learning. And every time I'm, sh every time I spend time with other artists, it inspires me. So Find your tribe. I don't know where it is. If I can help you with that, let me know. I'll be teaching in North Carolina, and I'm also teaching again at Tallapoosa School of Art in October. I'm teaching a beginning watercolor class. So regardless of your, your medium, find someone you can spend time with that shares a passion similar to yours. So thank you, Preston King and Susan Payne, for sharing the making of new pastels. I hope that watching this, you can see how much fun we have, that we love to laugh together, and learn together. And if you learned anything, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and follow along on this journey. I really appreciate those of you who have taken the time to subscribe and follow me. I'm almost, I'm so close to a thousand subscribers and that, that was a three year goal for me and I will make it before two years. So thank you, thank you, thank you for following me along, <laughs> following along with me. Say things backwards sometimes. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the views of the garden. We're at Jim Scott's garden and I just was looking at this view. Just one of the many amazing spots, vignettes. Hillary's down there painting. And this was my rendition of it. A little watercolor, I'll work on it a little bit more, but I had to stop, I was sitting on a rock and my butt was falling asleep.